Jerome Powell testified before Congress and delivered a report on the state of the economy. And while Congress and everyone else was wondering when the rate cuts will start, it seems like we're no closer to getting an answer. Consensus is rate cuts won't start until the middle of this year. And there's a distinct possibility that rate cuts might not even happen at all. And why is that? Well, during his testimony to Congress, some of his answers didn't make it seem like we were out of the woods just yet. During his testimony today, he was quoted as saying, Fed policy is likely at its peak and will dial back interest rates this year. However, the economic outlook is still uncertain. When asked if rate hikes were still on the table, Jerome Powell went on to say, and I quote, if inflation starts to flare back up again, that could justify us going and raising rates further from here. See, the Fed's mandate is to achieve maximum employment as well as ensure stable pricing. But if they can't get definitive progress on inflation, they will likely keep rates the same. And the Fed's preferred method of measuring inflation is the PCE, or personal consumption expenditures, which is a measure of inflation that excludes food and energy prices. And unfortunately, January's report showed an increase in the cost of services, which was the most in 12 months. Now, services include things like healthcare, hotels, restaurants, as well as recreation. And although January is historically a higher month for inflation because typically businesses push out price increases at the beginning of the year, any increase does not bode well for the economy, nor does it bode well for the current administration. But if the trend continues, the Fed most certainly will not cut rates. Also adding to the increase in inflation was housing. Housing increased 0.6% after only having increased 0.4% in December. So it ticked up slightly, which means shelter accounted for two thirds of the rise in CPI. I mean, everyone can see that. The cost of housing has not come down yet, despite higher interest rates. And if we take a look at this chart by Apollo Academy, you can see that rents, the shelter costs, are back on the rise, which has been steady since the last quarter of 2023. And this is important because housing makes up such a large portion of our economy. And it's hard to tame inflation with rising housing costs. Notably, this report was done on the basis that Apollo's chief economist does not believe that the Fed will cut rates this year, going against basically everything you see in the mainstream media. So again, there is no certainty to rate cuts this year. Some of the reasons we've been seeing inflation is because at the same time the Fed is increasing interest rates, the government, the Biden administration, is pumping money into the economy and has been doing so for the last couple years. So the growth in the economy has been fueled a lot by government investment at all levels. And that alone can cause inflationary pressures. Leading up to Powell's testimony and following January's inflation report, Fed governors have been giving increasingly more hawkish statements to the public. One of the Federal Reserve governors, Christopher Waller, said that he will need more evidence that inflation is cooling before he will support interest rate cuts, stating that he will need a couple more months of data to show that inflation is falling enough to warrant rate cuts. And this was a speech that he gave in Minneapolis in which he concluded with the question, what's the rush on rate cuts? And all these statements are consistent with the general consensus from the Federal Reserve, from other governors at the Federal Reserve. Basically after December, when they made it seem like they were going to be cutting rates this year, they've backtracked some and they are becoming increasingly more uncertain as to the timing of these rate cuts for 2024 and if there will be any at all. And all this was again on the heels of the most recent CPI report, which showed a notable increase in the cost of services, which to you and I, this is nothing new. We can drive down to our local grocery store and we can easily see that prices are definitely inflated. Food costs much more today than it has ever before. You can simply walk into a grocery store and see that inflation is still running rampant. But if you need something more concrete to give you evidence, look no further than this CSNBC report, which states that in the years prior to the lockdowns, the percentage of household income spent on food was actually on the decline. 
But then that all changed in 2002 as lockdowns eased and people started eating out again. Basically, people got so tired of being cooped up that they, they've since changed their eating habits and uh, eat out all the time. That's what it sounds like. And as of January of this year, food prices have risen 5.1% compared to the previous year. So if you're going out and eating at restaurants, the cost is now 5% more this January than it was last January. But wait, there's more. This is cumulative. Last January, food prices increased 5.8% from the previous year. So this is just kind of a snowball effect. Prices keep going up and up and up, and that is exactly why the Fed is trying to get a handle on inflation. And that's also potentially why they could potentially not cut rates at all this year. But as far as the Biden administration is concerned, they can't keep this up for much longer because higher interest rates actually affect the national debt. Not only does the Fed increasing rates affect our pocketbook and our bank account, it also affects the government's pocketbook. Currently, the national debt is going to increase $1 trillion every 100 days. If you didn't know, when the Fed increases interest rates, it also affects the interest rates on the money that the government borrows. And so the interest on federal debt increases as well. It's just like if you and I were going to get a credit card or the credit card that we had during the interest rate hikes. The interest on our credit card has actually gone up. And according to reports, interest is projected this year to be the second largest federal program. That means that most of our tax dollars will actually only go towards paying interest on the federal debt instead of going to other things like social programs, infrastructure projects, anything else. Most of it is going to be going towards paying off the interest on the federal debt. And it's projected this year that the interest on the government's debt is going to be larger than the defense budget. It's absolutely bonkers to think that most of our tax dollars are actually only going towards paying off the federal government's interest on its debt. I mean, think about that for a second. It's like we're supporting a out of control addict or something. You know, they just keep spending all this money and keep spending all this money and our tax dollars are just going towards paying off the interest. It's like they have a credit card they could just never pay off. I mean, sooner or later that's gotta give, but that's a topic for a completely other video. So while the Fed is trying to fight inflation, that can actually come with a cost. And what they're doing is actually the complete opposite of what the Biden administration wants during an election year. So the Republicans are inevitably going to blame the Biden administration for spending all kinds of money, all the pandemic era spending that caused all this inflation, as well as all these interest rate hikes by the Federal Reserve that have caused pain for families and small businesses across the United States. So while the administration doesn't directly control the Federal Reserve because it is a independent entity, the policy of higher for longer definitely doesn't benefit the Biden administration during an election year. And it could cause a lot of problems come November when you and I go to the ballot box. So with all that being said, there is still a ton of uncertainty on whether or not they are going to cut rates this year. And the only way for you to be prepared is to stay informed. So please, Hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, and I'll see you on the next one. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.